You know, the Lord was showing me a little while ago, I was reading in Daniel chapter 6. Awesome chapter. Daniel's an awesome book in the Bible. Talking about the faith of Daniel and the steadfastness of Daniel and the belief of Daniel that God would deliver him out of the mouth of the lions. I just want to read the Word of God, some of the Word of God to you about this event. And I want you to listen real close because this is a big lesson for all of us. The Word gives us examples and admonitions to follow. This is an intense time we're in right now. And we need to know who our God is. And we need to believe that He is a God of deliverance. I'm reading in Daniel 6, and I'm going to start with verse 3. Now Daniel, you know the king liked Daniel in the kingdom, this earthly kingdom. He liked him. And he was favored. And in verse 3, then it says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So he had favor. But the presidents and the princes didn't like that. They were jealous and envious. So what happens when that takes place? When people are jealous and envious? Then the presidents, verse 4, then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But you know what? They could not find none occasion nor fault in Daniel. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel. We can't find anything wrong with him. except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Now they were trying to find something wrong with Daniel. Because he had favor with the king and they didn't like that and they wanted to thwart that, prevent that, destroy that. So they set about with their plan against Daniel. Verse 6, Then these presidents and the princes assembled together to the king. Now they're going to the king. Unbeknownst to Daniel, behind Daniel's back, they're going to the king. And said thus unto him, King, Dar king Darius, live forever. They're going to put on the butter now. They're going to do the flattery all the presidents of the kingdom now this is what they did all the presidents of the kingdom the governors and the princes the counselors and the captains what did they do they have consulted together to establish a royal statue they were figuring out how they could get Daniel and they couldn't figure any way because Daniel was a righteous, faithful man. So this is what they conjured up. They've consulted together to establish a royal stature. Now this is what they did. And to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days save of thee king O king he shall be cast into the den 
of lions. Now they're giving him this suggestion. They want him to line up with it. Now, O king, establish the decree. Establish this decree, this this thing that we're trying to do against Daniel. Of course, the king didn't realize that's what it was. And sign the writing. Put it into law. That it be not changed. According to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Now they were going to make sure that thing was sealed, signed, and delivered. They were trying to make sure that there wasn't going to be no more Daniel in their way. This is an awesome story. This is an awesome story of deliverance of God Almighty when we believe. Believe. That's the key word. Believe. Believe. Verse 9. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. He signed it. They connived around and, and got him to sign it. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. And he kneeled upon his knees three times a day. Daniel was a man of prayer. A man of prayer because he knew the foundation there. Prayer. Belief. Communion with God. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and he prayed and he gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. So that wasn't going to stop Daniel from praying just because they put that into law. Because that was against what he knew to be right. That was against God. To pr try to put something in writing that you can't pray to God. That's exactly what they're doing now, isn't it, in this land? They're trying to throw it out altogether, prayer. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying. Well, they knew Daniel would be praying, didn't they? That's the reason they did all this to begin with. They knew he would be praying. They knew that God came first in his life. They knew that he was going to do God's will. And he was going to go before God no matter what they said or did. He was bold. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't timid. He knew who his God was. Then these men assembled, and they found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near, and they spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Now they're coming back, and they're telling that king, Oh, look what we found, king. And this they said, You know, haven't, <laughs> haven't you signed a decree? that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days save of thee o king shall be cast into the den of lions didn't you say that didn't you sign that into law the king answered and said the thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, Well, that Daniel, you know that Daniel king? That praying Daniel that you like so much? Which is of the children of the captivity of Judah? 
regarding not thee regarding not thee O king in other words he's not paying attention to your law king nor the decree that thou hast signed he's not paying attention to your law king he's still praying just like he has every day before the almighty God the one and only God the one and only king but but they said but he maketh his petition three times a day then the king when he heard these words oh his heart probably sank He was sore displeased with himself. And he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king, these wicked men, trying to get Daniel. And they said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persian, Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed. They're not letting up, are they? They're not going to let the king back down, are they? They want Daniel dead. They want Daniel out of the way. Then the king commanded, I'm sure with a sorrowful heart, he commanded that they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. See, he knew that Daniel had the real thing, the real deal. He knew in his heart that Daniel's God was real. And Daniel's God heard him. And Daniel's God would hear him and answer. Right here he says, your God's going to deliver you, Daniel. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. Boy, are they going to make sure Daniel is sealed up in there and cannot get out? Wow, isn't that awesome how God, he'll, he'll let that happen to show forth his deliverance in such a mighty awesome way. Even for the stone to be put across the entrance and there wasn't no other way out. And the only way out was sealed with a stone. <laughs> Are you kidding what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet. And with the signet of his lord that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Looks pretty bad for Daniel, doesn't it? The stone was put over the only way out and the king sealed it with his ring. It looked like Daniel was sealed for death, huh? But guess what? These guys got a big surprise in store for them. Because Daniel, is God, is an almighty God. And Daniel's God is our God. Almighty God. Then the king went to his palace. And he passed the night fasting. <laughs> Neither were instruments of music brought before him and his sleep went from him 
Then the king arose very early in the morning, and he went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. crying out in hope, in hope, he would hear Daniel's voice. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Hallelujah. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouths and they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Well, the king knew he hadn't done any hurt, did he? Now, what do you think these guys were thinking? When their whole plan was to set out to destroy Daniel, and hey, guess what? God stepped in. He stepped in. And he's stepping in now for his people. He's stepping in. And he's closing the mouths of the lions. And the wicked people that plan things against God's people, guess what? It's going to happen to them because that's what the Word says. It even says their own mouth will fall upon them. The things they've spoke out of their mouth, their curses will fall upon them. That's what the Word says. Okay. Now I want to show you what happened to them, okay? Then the king was exceedingly glad for him. And he commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no matter of hurt was found upon him. Because he believed he believed. He believed. Hallelujah. He believed in his God. Now I'm going to tell you something, child of God. We have to believe. We have to believe. We have to believe in our God. We have to believe. He will deliver. We have to believe that he'll take care of business. Okay? Believe. Believe. And the king commanded. Now you listen to this very close. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel those that had accused Daniel and they cast them now what did I just tell you what the wicked plan for God's people is going to happen to them and there's several instances in the word of God of that and this is just one and the king commanded and they brought those men which had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions. They cast them, their children, and their wives. And the lions had the mastery of them. Their God was not Daniel's God. They did not have the protection of God Almighty. And so they were devoured by the lions. The very thing that they planned for Daniel happened to them. And it was completed by Almighty God.
and the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces. What's the word say? God will break the bones of the wicked. God will do it himself. And break all their bones in pieces. Or ever they came at the bottom of the den. I mean, severe. This is serious business. But I'm going to tell you, God's people need to know. You need to know and believe. We all need to know, we need to believe that God is the victor. Hey, he is victor over the enemy. Now this is just one instance of the deliverance of God and of what the wicked plan for God's people happening to them. And another instance is Haman. What did Haman plan for Mordecai? And it was under the same circumstances. Jealousy, envy, wickedness. And what did he plan for Mordecai? He planned, he even built a hangman thing for him to be hung on. Hey, but what happened? What happened? He was hung on it, wasn't he? And even those that helped him were hung on it, weren't they? We have a mighty God. We have a mighty God as God's children. We have the victory. We are not the ones that are defeated, okay? We are not. We are victors. We have the victory, and <laughs> because we are in the one that is the victor, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, right now, there is still mercy being brought forth. Even in the judgment that's being brought forth against the wicked, God is still showing mercy at this time. I tell you, if you don't know Jesus, and you have not accepted his invitation to come, I would encourage you right now to come. Because you're not always going to have a chance to come. And he's not always going to strive with you. That's what the Bible says. There will come an end to his striving with you. You continue in rebellion. You continue turning your back on God. You continue your mocking. There will be a day. If you do not turn and do not repent, there will be a day that God will strike you down. In judgment. And you will go to hell. That's just about as plain as it can be put. Jesus Christ died for your sins. He died so that you can have life. Life everlasting. Don't turn away. Don't turn away. Eternity is just a breath away. And there's no repenting once you cross over into eternity. You cannot repent after that if you have not repented aforetime. Your destination is sealed. So 
so come to him today. Come. In Jesus' name. Amen.